So shall we get started? Yes, go right ahead. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, we're first time presenters at this conference. I gotta tell you, I absolutely loved uh, that last presentation. I'll admit, I personally feel a little bit out of my element here, except when you started talking about chemistry at the end. I am a professor of chemistry uh, and not an overly computer savvy one. Um, so I, I, some of the technical aspects of LaTeX and in the discussion, I, I don't uh, necessarily uh, follow as much, but that's why I brought with me a team that can help bridge uh, some of my deficiencies in that area. Um, as I mentioned, I am a professor of chemistry, but one that is really trying to uh, champion accessibility. Um, and uh, one reason why I, I love that, that past uh, presentation and some of the earlier presentations today. So it's just, just wonderful to see these things being di discussed. Listed on the slide um, is our team and we're based out of Rochester Institute of Technology. Uh, in Rochester, New York. One interesting fact about uh, RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology, is we hold the uh, National Technical Institute for the Deaf, uh, which is a, a technical institute where we uh, enroll over a thousand deaf and hard of hearing students in um, all, a whole sort of different disciplines. And that's kind of what got me uh, started along this path uh, to accessibility. I'll, I'll let um, my uh, colleagues introduce themselves as they, uh, as they present. Uh, but the, the, the goal of this present presentation and is really building on the last presentation is improving accessibility uh, of an open access journal uh, for which I am the editor. Uh, and uh, my colleagues are gonna talk about how we use LaTeX to help us with accessibility of our journal. So next slide. We're gonna talk a lot about open access today. Uh, it's something important to us at, at the core. Um, and open access publishing provides free costs, well, almost always free to the reader and sometimes to the author as well, uh, avenue for authors to disseminate their work. Here at Rochester Institute of Technology, we publish several, several uh, open access journals. Uh, and again, these open access journals often have less restrictive copyright licenses. Uh, next slide. The journal we're gonna talk about today uh, is the one that I previously mentioned that I am a co-editor of, is the Journal of Science Education for Students with Disabilities, JSESD. And JSESD provides a venue for the dissemination of information on science education for students with varying types of disabilities. It is a scholarly publication of the National Science Teachers Association in the US. Well, specifically their special interest group, Science Education for Students with Disabilities or SESD. Uh, and JSD has always been produced uh, in a print version up to recently. And we're gonna talk about uh, that change uh, in a minute. JSD is a peer reviewed journal it was first published in the 1990s. All editing and really all management uh, of the journal is done on a shoestring budget. With, uh, you can't even say it's a shoestring budget. There's, there's no budget at all, really. Uh, but we do try to be a, a leader in the field of, of uh, science education for students with disabilities. Next slide. So, uh, again, JSCSD is an open access uh, journal, and in an attempt to give um, a needed facelift to the journal, we decided to move it to the open access format from the print subscription-based format in 2007. And reasons for the change include cost, widespread dissemination, publishing, printing logistics. Um, our articles are published under the Creative Commons copyright li licenses, and JSD, I'm proud to say, is free to both um, the author and the reader audience. Um, so we, we don't charge to uh, publish open access and we don't charge any subscription for the readership of our information. The, uh, the information in the journal, I feel, is critical to get out there. 
so we, we, we need to make it as low cost, or in this case, uh, free. Next slide. So, you know, the goal of open access is, is provide broad access, access to scholarly, scholarly research, at least as it relates to journals. You know, but even when we success, succeed at removing price and permission barriers, others remain in place, and namely that's access for individuals with disabilities. You know, open access, which is unrestricted access to the scholarly uh, research is not the same as equal nor universal access. Universal access would be inclusive access uh, for everybody, including individuals with disabilities. And though my data is, uh, is a bit older and I need to update it, at least here in the United States, we have 56, Amer uh, 56 million citizens uh, living with disabilities, participating in the workforce, education system, entertainment venues um, can be difficult. We do have laws and standards like the Americans with Disabilities Act that provide greater access to building and buildings and public spaces. Uh, web standards and assistive technologies have provided increased access. However, a fully accessible digital environment is far from complete. Uh, digital technology and, and open access offer new opportunities for the education of students with disabilities, but there, there's still a divide, as I mentioned. Equal access is critical for advancing education and career opportunities for the students with disabilities. And this is a significant goal of the journal uh, JSESD. You know, beyond captioning for our deaf and hard of hearing users, I mentioned that we're at the National Technical Institute for the Deaf, which has the world's largest group of um, sign language interpreters and captionists. Uh, but beyond just captioning for deaf and hard of hearing users, which we do quite well, it is quite possible to create a web page compliant with our web standards that is still largely inaccessible for blind or low vision users. Uh, example, we, we have guidelines that exist for labeling graphics and alt text in order to give a uh, blind user with a textual, textual equivalent to a graphical element. Uh, but the graphic is, is an illustration of, of a chemical reaction as it was discussed in the last uh, presentation and a web author labels it as just science, that's of little use for increasing the users, the, the blind low vision users or readers comprehension. So uh, this is kind of the platform uh, that we have. We, we have this journal. Uh, we feel the information in the journal is very, informa uh, very important. But of course, being a journal for students with um, education of students with disabilities, we need to uh, talk the talk and walk the walk, if you will, as it relates to being accessible. I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Mike Nolan, who's going to pick up the presentation at this point. Great. Uh, thank you, Dr. Pagano. Um, so hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Mike Nolan. I'm the Assistant Director of Open at RIT. Uh, open at RIT is uh, an open programs office for the entirety of the university. Our goals are really to discover and grow the footprint of RIT's impact on all things open, including but not limited to things like open source software, open data, open science, open hardware, open educational resources, and other efforts like that. And generally, we call this sort of stuff open work. Uh, next slide, please. So as part of this initiative, we have this sort of fellowship. Um, and as part of this fellowship, we could create a corresponding team of students and staff called LibreCore. Uh, this sort of group is dedicated to expanding the use of RIT faculty and staff open work and associated communities with those. The fellows program awarded the services to, of that team to provide consultation and assistance to our fellows in order to foster the creation or expansion of contributor communities around their projects. Uh, we believe that this work can kind of enhance the visibility, impact, and translation of our fellows' efforts. And so one of our fellows happens to be with us, Dr. Todd Pagano, who came to us hoping to improve the accessibility of his open access journal that he just sort of talked about. Uh, next slide. So when Dr. Pagano came to us, he was interested in seeing if we could use our team of technologists to kind of convert a lot of his PDF pu publications 
into something that is more accessible to screen reader applications. Uh, for us at Open RIT, this seemed like an incredibly valuable project. Uh, and you know, we kind of hope that this project, as we work on it, will uh, ensure that open access also means equal access uh, across our university, across all the readers of this journal. Um, and so, you know, our team kind of set off into experimenting into a variety of ways that we could go about accomplishing this. Um, and to describe that and to begin sort of going over the variety of ways that we talked about it, I'm going to introduce uh, one of our UX designers, Rahul. Uh, or actually, I believe it will be Suhas, our developer, uh, who will be talking about that. So Suhas, please take it away. Yes. Uh, in this stage, while uh, converting a PDF to HTML, we tried out numerous tools. Uh, the three major tools that we tested are Pandoc, Convert API, and PDF to HTMLX. Well, all, all of these tools serve uh, our purposes to some extent, but by extracting all the text from the PDF. However, uh, these tools uh, fail to recognize uh, equations, tables, and figures. So as a result of this, the obtained HTML from these tools were extremely inaccessible. And we, this, uh, so, we plan, so we decided to try out new things uh, other than from converting PDF to HTML. So now Rahul will talk about uh, some of the InDesign accessible features. Yeah. Hi, uh, I'm uh, Rahul Jaiswal, and I'm working as a user experience designer for Open at RIT. And I have been working on a lot of projects which included uh, user experience design and accessibility uh, projects. So uh, this was like one of the projects where I was uh, has to work on accessibility features related to like uh, document accessibility in PDFs and Word document. So when we were going through uh, the way to find like how we can make these documents accessible, uh, we started uh, this uh, as our first approach to like uh, make the document accessible uh, into PDF and HTML because InDesign has feature to like make an accessible PDF and accessible HTML files. Uh, I'm just going to uh, walk through like a little step, like briefly through the steps that we use to make uh, the documents and the HTML accessible using the InDesign, just to show like what struggles that we followed when we were going through these steps. And yeah, so uh, when we started uh, using InDesign to make the documents accessible, uh, these are like a couple of the steps that we followed. And uh, some of the things has to be like in the sequence before doing it, because if we do one step before the other step, sometimes it, uh, it messes up with the uh, accessibility thing. So the first thing that we do while do, making a document accessible is like you have to define every uh, typographic styles that you have in your InDesign file. So when I'm talking about uh, the typographic styles, it's, it's like even uh, if one text is like bold, the other text is italicized. So you have to define different set of text as a different typographic styles. So once you define all different type of typographic styles in your document, uh, you move toward creating different kind of tags. And these tags are nothing but the HTML tags that we will be using uh, further in the HTML file. So we, we define uh, different kind of tags that we'll be using in either PDF or HTML when, we, when the screen reader will be going through it. So these tags are normal HTML tags like paragraph tag, uh, or H1 tag, heading one tag, or heading two tag. So those kind of tags. So once you have that, uh, we just try to map them to our typographic styles. Then the third step is adding like all the alt text and to images and tables. Finally, like when we have all these things set up, we can order our document. So uh, ordering document uh, basically means like how the screen reader will go through the, uh, the document when this uh, when it will be reading it for our users and finally like when when, when we are done with that we can export the PDF and uh, HTML uh, for our users so I'll, I'll just show like a quick uh, screenshot of the thing uh, that I used while I was going through the end design file just show uh, like uh, how many steps that we followed so th this is this is a page where I'm showing like how you define different typographic styles when when you are 
uh, using the end design. So every single page you create different uh, styles and name them accordingly. So we, we can have like caption in a different style, author name in a different style. So we list every single uh, typographic styles that we are using in this tag. So once we have these things defined, what we do is like, uh, we can, uh, there's an option in InDesign in which you can actually tell the software that when you export this file to an HTML uh, file, you, uh, you can uh, export this particular typographic style. Like on the top, you can see like, this is a paragraph style. So how do you want to export it when you are going to export in HTML uh, format? So you have to uh, tell the editor in this particular properties panel that, oh, uh, this paragraph style will be exported as P or a paragraph tag or H1 tag. So whatever is your need, you can like accordingly define those tags here. So once that's done, now what you do is like all the tags which you have defined earlier, now you have to again map it in this tag, which is, which is kind of a similar thing that we did in our previous step, but it is just an additional tag to just make InDesign uh, know about how we are mapping all our tags in a particular properties panel. So all the tags here are like not mapped right now on the right hand side, you can see like these tags are, these styles are not mapped. So we have to map like individual styles that we have de uh, uh, defined in our document to a particular HTML tag type. So this is what you do here. Like you have uh, the certain predefined set of tags defined here. So you just click on uh, individual tags here and try to map every single typographic styles with either H1, H2, H3, or any of the tags which corresponds to your design. So this is another step. So finally, after this step, when we have like everything ready, you have, you have everything mapped, then you start ordering all the text in your document in a certain way that you, that, that, that you want your screen reader to read. So you, then you start ordering everything uh, in a sequence. So on the rightmost screen, like rightmost screenshot, you can see like, this is the way screen reader is gonna read these chunk of text on the screen. Reader. So you, you just click on the text and try to create a sequence. So if, if you miss any one of these uh, steps, it's, uh, it will be accessibility problem and we uh, go through accessibility check and any of the accessibility software. So that's where, uh, a lot of struggles came because uh, like these are a good approach to do like to make a, a document accessible but following all these steps for every single document is sometimes difficult. So that's why we thought of uh, uh, doing it with the latex before uh, uh, like once we uh, saw all these struggles when we are going through this. This is just an uh, additional style to show like once we have all our documents, we can either export it to like PDF or HTML. So InDesign has feature to uh, give us the power to export any document into PDF or HTML. So this is uh, the final step in that, but uh, we have like a lot of problems because we wanted to create a template, uh, which is uh, like common to every document. And if we have a template and we can just copy paste our text, it can directly turn it, to, turn it into an accessible document instead of following all these steps, redundant steps every time for a single, for different kind of documents. So we finally like having, uh, for having all those uh, problems, we moved into LaTeX and starting uh, started to create a template because uh, when we started doing it, uh, we, we saw like some of the problems for the screen order and things were solved by the LaTeX itself. So this is, this is just, uh, an example of what we are trying to achieve when uh, when we were uh, try to make the things accessible. So this is this is one of the Jade uh, the document that we are trying to make accessible, and this is kind of a format that we are trying to achieve. And we have like a lot of problems that uh, Mike will be uh, addressing later part of the presentation that that we faced during uh, editing the latex file. But majorly, like it 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 was. It was uh, the problem that we faced were majorly or like relate, was related to layouts and the design because uh, the document that we are editing has like a hybrid kind of a layout. It has a single column and a double column layout mixed with uh, certain of the features like footnotes and everything else. So 
those were kind of a thing that we uh, faced during uh, the making these things accessible. So that's all. And the next slide I have, I think Suhas will be presenting the next slide to tell you about like how we finally moved from latex to uh, the HTML file and what was our approach. So, so that's... Yeah. So uh, we used a uh, LaTeX XML uh, library for converting document from LaTeX to HTML. So LaTeX XML, as the name suggests, first converts uh, LaTeX to an intermediate uh, XML format before converting it to any other uh, format. So LaTeX XML renders a highly accessible HTML and it overcomes some of the issues related to figures and equation that we previously faced. So we also tried to further improve the accessibility and the appearance of the rendered HTML by uh, adding the client side JavaScript. So here's uh, the code snippet for uh, uh, making the uh, footnotes accessible and because uh, the footnotes uh, rendered from LaTeX XML uh, software uh, it was previously uh, inaccessible and it's only visible uh, when you when it's on the hover state so see we also uh, fixed other minor uh, issues with the help of JavaScript and uh, CSS so now Mike will talk about uh, some of the other challenges and the future steps of this project. Thank you, Suhas. Um, right. So, I mean, as with any project, you know, we encountered a number of challenges. And I think uh, to provide a bit of context here, right, our goal wasn't simply to make a single um, submitted paper accessible using our team. You know, our goal is to create a process that our open access journal publishing team can use to make it so every single submission that they get in whatever format, usually in Microsoft Word, can be easily turned into an article that can be published online and be accessible and to meet the standards that the journal has in terms of, you know, the, the visual look of the PDF and also to meet the use new accessibility standards that we're setting out. So as I said earlier, ne nearly all journal submissions are given in the format of, you know, like a Microsoft Word document, um, which oftentimes includes a variety of styles and elements. You know, oftentimes it's pretty basic stuff. You know, the most advanced that I think we are really planning for is things like uh, figures and tables. But it's important that we make sure that elements that are bolded or italicized or underlined or so on, uh, you know, end up showing that way in the underlying uh, latex document. Um, and so to ensure that we can automatically pull these styles out of a format that's pretty difficult to ingest, such as the, uh, a Word document, and to make sure that our editors don't have to manually go through and ensure that the corresponding latex markup uh, matches that of the, um, the Word document, to have some sort of automatic translation step was really important for us. Uh, when we began this project, our team was fairly new to LaTeX and learning how to make a template which suited the needs and styles of the journal took a bit of a learning curve. And in, in fact, you know, I'm sure many of you have gone through this phase, but it wasn't until even recently that I, I still don't even know like the proper pronunciation or if there is a kind of um, mandated sort of LaTeX, LaTeX, and I, I switch between it uh, pretty daily. Um, but so learning these, you know, how to create these different styles, you know, doing a, a single column layout or a dual column layout and having different layouts for our PDF uh, format and our HTML format and figuring out all of the ways to configure our document and to create a good template uh, was quite a learning curve for us. And, you know, it actually, with the help of a number of people in this community, uh, we were able to learn quite a bit. Uh, and then lastly, ensuring that the, the template uh, generated accessible output is a constant challenge for us because, you know, we're always encountering new types of figures and tables and elements that might not have been submitted in a previous paper, but, you know, is, is something that is going to be submitted in the future. And so figuring out how to cope with that, how to make sure that, uh, you know, our publishing team can 
know how to handle those and to make sure that the correct documentation is written for them is a really uh, important thing for us. So, you know, we, we've made quite a bit of progress though, but it's always kind of a work in progress as well. Um, so, i it off to Dr. Pagano to talk about some of our future hopes. Thanks, Mike. I, I mean, quickly taking aside, building on what uh, Mike just mentioned, um, we didn't even know about this conference until, I mean, Mike or uh, Rahul or Suhas can explain it better. They were more involved. They were reaching out to you, you guys, uh, members in a user group or, or blog. Mike could correct me with the, with the exact story. And we were told about this conference and said we should uh, present here. What, what was it, Mike? Was it a... Um, a colleague of ours who also presented at this conference from RIT, uh, I believe, uh, referred us to uh, Boris Feitzman. Um, and then, you know, Boris was a great asset and hopped on a call with us and talked us through quite a few things. Yeah. So we, we appreciate uh, all the help from this community. And again, a big picture, I should have, when I was talking about the journal, I should have set the stage a little bit. We, we do, um, because of our, our, the structure and the, the programming we use to publish and disseminate our journal, we are kind of stuck with um, presenting all of our articles as a PDF, which again, Rahul mentioned a lot of the struggles in getting those PDFs uh, accessible. And I work uh, heavily with the blind, low vision uh, community who tend to just almost ubiquitously tell me that they don't prefer things in PDF for uh, screen reading uh, capabilities. And I'm sure there, I, I know that uh, Adobe PDF does have accessibility features built in. and There probably is a right way uh, to make uh, a PDF accessible. Uh, it doesn't seem easy uh, to us. Um, and this is kind of why we were looking for a different way to do so. But even more importantly, um, it's the HTML output that uh, my colleagues, my blind and low vision colleagues were encouraging us to be able to publish in, uh, which seems to uh, work better with screen readers. So again, the challenge is we, we want to keep somewhat of our traditional two column PDF article uh, that we've had for uh, 30 years, uh, but also a, a really, um, a really nice HTML that's fully accessible uh, that the uh, screen readers use quite well. Um, again, the, the goal, as, as Mike kind of alluded, is uh, not just fixing this one journal, but we want to generally uh, figure out ways to make all open access journals accessible. And again, we, we talked a little bit about how LaTeX has helped us uh, we're early. We're early in the process, um, but we have uh, we have converted uh, an article or two with, with satisfactory results. Um, one thing that's very important to us and open at RIT is that the nature of all of our software and examples being transparent and open. Uh, this is a key to this this project. Uh, and again, we hope that JSESD, uh, our Journal of Science Education for Students with Disabilities, can be an example for other open access journals to follow in order to make their journals more accessible. Um, we are open for questions now, but also uh, help. Uh, again, we're, we're kind of new to this community. If uh, people have any uh, advice, uh, we certainly welcome the collective wisdom, uh, again, towards this goal of making our journal articles more accessible, uh, specifically for blind, uh, low vision readers. So thank you for the opportunity to present. We're here for questions or advice. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions or comments? See, there's one. Oh, I have one. Can I can I ask a question? Is it taking your question? I'm, I'm I'm a bit surprised why you start uh, using a, what's Bruce's tool? What is it? Late LaTeX ML? Why don't you just use Make for HT? So if you use or Take for HT, Make for HT, use it with the math checks option. You get pretty much accessible web math uh, out of the box. 
I'm, I'm going to have to hand this over to someone. I don't even know what those things are that you mentioned. I, I would clarify. And yeah, we, we do often sometimes have uh, chemical equations and mathematical equations. Um, but it, it is a, a pedagogical journal. So the, the information is, is heavily more for, about teaching techniques and teaching practices uh, for how to uh, teach science to students with disabilities. That said, we, we do certainly have mathematical formulas from time to time as well as chemical equations, but I'm gonna hope that someone else on the team can more directly answer your question. Uh, I could answer that. Uh, I tried out uh, make for hd and uh, some other tools. Uh, but uh, LaTeX XML, uh, uh, when we uh, 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 when we decided to uh, use the screen reader, uh, the LaTeX XML had a proper uh, HTML semantics than other tools. So, and it also rendered our uh, uh, journals uh, very well than other tools. So, uh, we decided to go for that. Right, that, I, I just mentioned that you might want to use it with the math checks option, then you get kind of fully accessible math straight out of the box. I could point you to a couple of points where, where it wouldn't work with LaTeX ML, but you know, that's a different discussion. Thanks. No, th thank you, thank you for that suggestion. Any other questions? Uh, I've, I've got a few bits of it's bits and pieces. Uh, in an entirely different setting, I read the advice, regularly gather harmoniously in large numbers. <laughs> and I think we've got a lot of that, except the numbers aren't large enough. But the recordings will help disseminate. So I think disseminate videos, yours and others, will be a great help. Uh, Jonathan Godfrey, in the session I did yesterday, uh, this morning, uh, very clearly explained why screen readers were better with HTML. Uh, he's a blind lecturer of statistics in New Zealand. Um, and that's in the session that's under my name, but I didn't say very much uh, there. So you might find that helpful. Uh, something I didn't fully understand was the strong connection Rochester has with vision. And the, some people might benefit from knowing a little bit about that. And I'd like to know how that influences RIT, which is the place you're working. I guess it gives you a big focus on design amongst other things. Well, let me, let me start uh, with it. So I think, um, well, I was asked to be editor of this journal, the Journal of Science Education for Students with Disabilities, largely because of my work with deaf and hard of hearing students. So I built uh, in the early 2000s, uh, a one of a kind uh, chemistry degree program solely for deaf and hard of hearing students. So I became, um, again, even though my training is not in accessibility or pedagogy, uh, it is it's chemistry, but I became very interested in how to make my classroom material and anything disseminated uh, more accessible for deaf and hard of hearing students. That's, that's my expertise. Uh, and I could speak far more about that. But the journal that I was asked to uh, become editor uh, is not only for deaf and hard of hearing students. Uh, so it's for any, any variety of disability for any, any level of education from kindergarten through university. Um, so it actually turns out that Oh, I would say more than half uh, and probably a lot more than half of the articles that are published in our journal relate to teaching to students who are blind or low vision. Um, so again, if, if we are a journal for students with disabilities and we're publishing a lot of articles related to teaching students uh, who are blind or low vision, we really need to up our game related to uh, accessibility uh, for individuals who are blind or low vision. Uh, so that's more kind of a complete uh, picture. It started, it started with my own um, expertise in making science accessible to deaf and hard of hearing students. And it grew through my editorship of this journal, which has a larger reach uh, of other uh, disabilities. Uh, but again, we're, we're, we're really keen on, on getting our journal uh, accessible. Does that answer the question? 
it's pretty good, and uh, I'm I'm really glad you came to talk. Oh, thank you. Any other comments or questions? I should add. I should add just real real briefly, if we have a few minutes. I mean, sure. Among among the population of uh, individuals who are deaf and hard of hearing, there um, are many incidents of, of secondary, including uh, vision. Um, concern. So uh, again, th those aren't necessarily the uh, focus of the articles that are published in our journal, but uh, I, I do think RIT and because of the National Technical Institute for Deaf is, is kind of a leader in, in general accessibility. Um, and then you, you, had, you had asked something about design for accessibility. Um, I don't know um, how much we focus uh, necessarily at RIT uh, uh, related to design for accessibility, but I mean that's what we're starting here with Suhas, Rahul, and Mike. Um, we're really trying to do grassroots effort uh, at bringing bringing this journal accessible and getting the word out there so so others can become accessible. Uh, if I if I make a jump in here, I don't know if you, if you listen to the talks that uh, were given earlier today, um, but uh, right now, I mean, not well, not right now, but pretty soon, uh, from the LaTeX project side, uh, we will be in a position where it will be extremely interesting to work with people like you to see how soon we can help with making um, uh, a corpus of, of documents um, accessible in terms of, of producing accessible PDA from where these kind of things fail. So you might, we might want to get together afterwards to, to see if there is, a, is, is is a collaboration possible? And uh, it would certainly mean that uh, from your end, you would play guinea pig in some <laughs> sense. We will not be able to, to, to satisfy you, your needs immediately, but uh, eventually that's, that's the goal. So um, as, as early as, as, as that might be possible, um, and sounds like that is one of your sort of corner cases where it is problematic. You have a solution going to, to, to HTML nicely, but you also want to keep the um, PDF site becoming accessible as well. And so that, that would be one, one area where collaboration early on might be helpful to understand where to focus on first and where to focus on next um, in, in, in those kind of things. So. Just wanted to throw that in as, as, as being um, something that is, at least for uh, starting next year, being a very sort of viable possibility. Yeah, that would be excellent. And we will certainly be in touch. That, that sounds awesome. Todd, when did your project start? Uh, can you repeat that? When did your project start? So um, the, the specific project, well, I've been losing sleep over the accessibility of my journal for a long time. Uh, my, again, I have a lot of friends uh, who are blind, low vision, who have been nicely telling me, you know, we, we need to do this better. Um, I guess I got to a breaking point last year where I just, I couldn't, um, I, I, I couldn't feel good about going for, forward with the journal for students with disabilities without be more accessible and specifically to, uh, to work with our screen readers. So I applied for this uh, program, this fellows program that Mike mentioned, uh, and we haven't been working on it. Well, I guess we started late uh, spring semester. So what are we, four months into, into this, Mike? This is specifically related to trying to use LaTeX or, and then as Rahul mentioned, other uh, other programs uh, to get more accessible articles. I think I think we're on four months. That, that sounds right to me. Yeah, I think three or four months. Okay. Any other comments or questions? We're just about out of time, but we have about a little bit of time. If anyone else wants to chime in. 
Okay, in that case, I want to thank the speakers and another great accessibility presentation. And we will be back in how long? Like an like a, an hour and almost 15 minutes for more accessibility. Ross Moore will be on.